This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this is going to be a sketchbook session where I just work in my sketchbook and talk about some tips and ideas and tricks that I sort of did and, and came up with while I was doing this sketchbook session. The first thing that I started off with was I went back to like an old like gouache sketch that I did the day prior or a couple days prior and I added on to it and sort of like tried to complete the sketch and it's more of like a mini painting than an actual sketch but I think I did gouache as the base of it. I don't know if it was acrylic gouache or uh, regular gouache, but I wanted to draw this little duck. Well, not a duck. It's sort of a crane, but it, I drew it like a duck, just like a tall bird walking through the water because I saw a crane recently in the wild and I was just like, oh, I want to draw just like a really tall bird walking in the water. And I did gouache as the base painting. And then I am adding some pencil crayon and some uh, wax pastels, which you'll see eventually. It's the Caron Dash uh, Neo Color 2 pastels. And I think a good way to get warmed up in your sketchbook is to go back to some older sketches and sort of add things here and there, finish up some things, um, go to pages that you've already put stuff in and add more things to that page because it can be a little bit daunting to flip to a brand new page and you don't really know what to draw. So going back to old ones can sort of help you warm up a bit and not have to jump right into like a blank page and also helps you fill out your sketchbook more. Um, that's what I like to do. That's sort of my sketching process. I'll open my sketchbook. I'll flip through some of my recent spreads and be like, oh, I want to finish that sketch. I want to add some things in this blank space here, maybe color in the background of some sketches. And after you've had enough of that, you can flip to a new page and start a new sketch and you'll see what I do. Later on, I actually like drew a little bit differently in this video. I did something that's a lot different from my normal style, which I think is fun to do every once in a while. Just like let yourself sort of be a different artist for the day and do something a little differently. But it's still gonna look like your work. It's just something I don't normally draw, but you'll see. For now, I'm doing this little bird. I like all the colors that I use and making the reflection was fun, but it's not like, you know, exactly how I wanted it to be. It's just a sketch, but I had a lot of fun playing with the different textures and the different supplies. I recently ordered a whole bunch more uh, pencil crayons. They didn't arrive in time for this video, but I got tons and they actually missed five of them. Like five of them were missing from the package, so they were resending them to me. But I'm really excited to continue my traditional art journey and keep uh, sketching and keep going with this sketchbook. I realized this sketchbook is actually a little bit too big for me. I think from now on, I will not use sketchbooks this big. It's just not very portable for me. I find it a little bit difficult to like curl up on the couch with it and, and sketch on the couch because the pages are so tall that I can't like hold it comfortably and sketch in it comfortably. And it's like wide, it's just too big. And it's like a wide sketchbook. It's just, it's just too big for my preference. So now this is the exciting part and where I have some ideas for you to try in your sketchbook. I've been watching a lot of Sophie McPike videos and she kind of does similar things. And I was like, you know what? I want to try something like that where you just drop down a bunch of ink colors and then draw on top of it and see what you can come up with. So I've actually had these inks for a long time. They're the Ecoline watercolor inks. And it's basically just like really pigmented, saturated liquid ink, watercolor ink. I mean, all ink is liquid. I mean, kind of. Um, but I wet the entire page and I just started dropping down random colors here and there. And I just spread, spread them around with a wet brush. And I wanted to just get a really bright uh, underpainting to work with. And I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I didn't know what I was going to turn it into. I just had the urge to play around with these inks. So that's how I started the page. Then I dried it with my hair dryer and I took out some other supplies to draw on top. And I think I immediately was like, I'm gonna draw a dog and the flower will be the tail. And it was just like turning out really weird. So I got some white gouache and I painted over it and I started to carve out these flower shapes. And this is just like pure experimentation here. It's not like I was trying to make something that was like, oh, this is my vision, it's gonna look great. I was just like, okay, what can I do with this paint? Covering, 
areas, carving out the flowers. And I'm using regular gouache for this. It's the type of gouache that reactivates with water. I actually recently bought a acryl gouache set from Turner, the Turner Acryl Gouache. I haven't really got a chance to use it yet. I just swatched it in my sketchbook, but I'm very excited to use that in more paintings. I'm working on a painting right now, but I don't know if I'm going to bring it out to traditional or if I'm just going to do a digital one because I kind of miss digital art. I've been doing a lot of sketching and I did that painting recently, but I am very excited to use them. So I'm still like on the fence. Like, do I want to do a traditional painting or do I do it digitally? I'm not sure. I think I'll be able to do it better digitally, but we'll see. It, it's the June print that I'm working on and I'm very excited. Now to thank the video sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you probably know, Squarespace is an online platform where you can build your own website, whether that be a blog, a portfolio, an online store, you can really do a lot of different things with Squarespace. Something I've recently started using is their Fluid Engine. This is their drag and drop technology for their website editor. You can actually like add some text, add some photos, drag and drop them, and they all fit together on this grid. And it makes it really easy to edit your site. And of course I have my portfolio and galleries tab. It's really easy to do galleries in Squarespace and I update it as I create new illustrations. I just upload the photos and rearrange them so they look nice beside each other. They also have very flexible templates. They have different types of templates depending on what you'll be using your website for. And you can change the text, change the fonts, the colors. It's very flexible and you can make it your own. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now on to the rest of the video. Then I took some more gouache. I think it was dried on a palette that I had previously. So I wanted to use up the paint and not just like wash it off one day and redo it. That's the good thing about gouache that reactivates with water and not acrylic gouache is that if you're done painting and the paint dries, you can always reuse it the next day or weeks or months later. You can just spray it with some water or just get your brush wet and use it. Um, and you can use the paint again. And it's really easy to like not waste it. And that's why I really like it. I started putting a bunch of little pink flowers all over the place and little stems and I was having a lot of fun just like trying to just, you know, I was just mindlessly sketching. I wasn't like planning things out. I was just seeing what I could do, not um, like putting myself in a certain box like you have to draw it this way and you have to do this. I was just drawing whatever and it was fun to just see what the supplies could do when I use them together because I eventually used the wax pastels on top. And I really like this teal background color that I came up with. Um, I think it's a really nice blue and it contrasts well with the pink. And I wanted the background to be even darker. So I kept going over it and I even added some wax pastels. So I think it's just really fun to have these random experimental pages every once in a while in your sketchbook. It can just sort of help you loosen up and not be too precious with it and just see what you can make when you're not really trying or thinking. Like, is this a perfect page? I don't think so, but it is a fun sketchbook page. It was fun to do, and I'm really glad I did it. It was sort of like very impromptu. So I would recommend just like wetting your whole page, dropping down some color, letting it dry, and seeing what you can create. It's kind of like that blob shape challenge where you you draw a bunch of random shapes in your sketchbook or solid shapes or just contours of shapes, and then you try to make them into things. It's easy to make anything into a flower, but I was like, you know what? I don't really know what I'm drawing today. I just want to do something fun and just like impulsively draw a bunch of fun flowers and use up this gouache on my palette. It was a lot of fun. Also, I am i don't really know how to use the Ecoline inks. Like, I know you can like, like in theory, I know you use them like watercolor, but how do you like get them on your palette and like keep the colors from getting like contaminated on your palette? Um, I guess like the workflow of using them, I'm not really sure of, like mixing them and like I don't know. They just seem messy and difficult to work with, and that's why I haven't really used them. But I thought it was a good time to break them out and see what I can do. And I should have, like, I think it would be fun to, like, water them down, but you have to use, like, eyedroppers and, like, get little, like, palettes with wells in them, and it's just easier to spill stuff like this. So I didn't really bother mixing them. I just dropped them straight onto the paper. But 
it was a lot of fun um, just messing around. And I felt like I could have done a couple more pages like this, but I think I just like ran out of time for the day. But um, I really wanted to like actually draw something that felt like something I normally draw. So I, I created this next page and I thought, you know what? I want to draw some dogs. I grabbed the pastel and sorry if the shots are a little blurry eventually. Um, they're not blurry forever. It's just some of them, it focuses on my hand instead of the paper because I forgot to set my manual focus. But I got out the pastels and I carved out the shapes of the dogs, of the dog. And then I got my colored pencils and defined the details a little bit more. I think this is a really fun way to make art and I want to do this more where you just like scribble it basically. Like I think it's a really fun and like satisfying way to make art. Because you have this, you have all of this like uncontrolled texture, basically, and I just really like carving shapes out of an existing color. It just kind of unifies everything a little bit better. And I find when you're not caring about how things look, it tends to look a little bit more spontaneous and natural. Um, I do think I messed up the legs a little bit. It's not the best, but you know, it was fun, and I feel like I could do a lot more pages like this and get better at this technique and like bring this type of style into my main work a little more in a little more controlled way. That's the best part about sketching. You can discover things that you might want to bring into your actual completed illustrations. That's the whole point of sketching, to come up with ideas, practice, explore, see what things you can learn. It's like your, your testing grounds for things you might do. And you might even come up with some actual like illustrations in the sketchbook that you use for things. I think I was gonna draw a pansy on this, on one of these eventually, but it just doesn't really, <laughs> it, I don't know why I scribbled random yellow. I think the dog sketch above turned out a lot nicer than the one below. Um, Cause the one below is just a little forced, like it's not really what I wanted, but I do like the top dog sketch. Um, it's something that I might try to keep pushing and keep exploring doing this type of drawing. And I think it would be fun to do like a whole page of like different animals like this in a little more detailed way. But I had a lot of fun with this little sketchbook session and I hope it inspires you to kind of try some new things that you don't normally do. And don't like put yourself in a box too much, just like experiment and see because you never know what you might find and what you might discover. And if it doesn't look good, at least it was fun. That's kind of how I feel about the giant flower page. It's like, it's okay. It was like, me practicing textures and just seeing how the supplies interact with each other and it was definitely a learning process and I think it looks kind of interesting in a sketchbook and the page is all crinkly and nice and I also used the palette that I made myself in a ceramic in a friend's ceramic studio which was fun because I really like that palette all the supplies will be linked in the description if you're curious about anything I used I really hope you enjoyed this little sketchbook session and I'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.